In 2014, on an episode of The Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon and his guest for that night, Daniel Radcliffe, had a discussion about rap music. But yeah, like, I've always had kind of an obsession with memorizing uh, complicated, lyrically intricate and fast songs, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's it's a disease. A, like, a <laughs> Black Alicious's Alphabet Aerobics. That would be one. You know how to do that whole yeah, song. Yeah, I do, yes. That's one of the trickiest, fastest songs I know. Well, yeah. <laughs> you notice how when Jimmy mentions this group, Blackalicious, there's no reaction from the audience whatsoever? That's because if you weren't deep into indie progressive hip hop in the early 2000s, you probably don't know who that is. Well, incidentally, I was obsessed with underground hip hop in the early 2000s. And Blackalicious happens to be one of my all time favorite rap groups. I'd like to tell you a little bit about them if that's okay. And then we'll circle back around to Daniel Radcliffe and how this Tonight Show appearance ended up being so significant. Hi, I'm D1J. Follow me. Okay, so someone has left me a memo saying that you should click the subscribe button. I don't really know who left this here, but that sounds like a pretty good idea. I think you should do that. Rapping as a technical skill is often overlooked in my opinion. I think a lot of people believe that rapping, unlike singing or playing an instrument, is easy to do. And at its most basic level, I guess it is. It's just talking rhythmically. I mean, even Sandra Bullock can do it. Now what you hear is not a test. I'm a rapping to the beat. And me, the group, and my friends are gonna try and move your feet. Kinda. As far as popular hip hop goes, only a select few rappers specifically intend to draw your attention to how good they are at rapping. The most obvious example that everyone knows is Eminem. This song, Rap God, is not about anything, and the musical arrangement isn't anything special either. It's just a show case of Eminem's skill. When Eminem first started blowing up, his ability to combine complex rhyme schemes, clever wordplay, and a fast-paced flow was pretty rare for a mainstream audience to see. And Eminem is one of the best at it, don't get me wrong. But for anyone who was a fan of the independent underground hip-hop scene, that style of rapping was and is pretty commonplace. And one of the masters of it was a man named Timothy Parker, better known by his very fitting rap alias, gift of gab. Enter my enemy energy element. I am an entity walking ahead of the pack. I really am out of my head in this evidence that I will never be able to ever quit. Okay, so let's back up for a minute. In 1992, Gift of Gab and his high school buddy Xavier Mosley, better known as Chief XL, a DJ and producer, joined together to form a hip hop act called Blackalicious. And after just a few years, they already began to make waves in the independent hip hop scene. In 1999, Blackalicious released an EP titled A to G, which opened with a song of the the same name. As the title suggests, Gift of Gab dropped some braggadocious rhymes while progressing through the alphabet from A to G. Analog arsonist, aiming at your arteries, all seeing abstract, analyze everything. Now, I gush about Gift of Gab's rhyming ability, but Chief XL was an integral part of Blackalicious as well, because as you'll hear, he consistently put together dope ass beats for Gab to rap over. I love the beat for A to G. It's actually a sample from a gospel song, but in this context, it's reminiscent of an old 70s episode of Sesame Street or The Electric Company, which fits the theme of alphabet and vocabulary. The Electric Company, now that's a deep cut. But the standout track from that EP could be considered a follow-up to A to G. I'm talking about Alphabet Aerobics, the final track of the EP. It's very similar to the opening track, except Gab has basically reached his final form. Not only does Gab rap all the way to the letter Z this time, he does it while the tempo of the track steadily increases. Really raw raps, rising up rapidly, riding the rushing radio activity. Much like Rap God, these songs aren't about anything. It's simply Gift of Gab showing off, and it's amazing. Super scientific, sound search thought, sound that are soft. 
largely on the strength of A to G, which Blackalicious later expanded into a full-length album called Nia, Blackalicious was offered a major label deal with what was then known as MCA Records. And with MCA, Blackalicious would release what I consider to be their magnum opus, an album called Blazing Arrow. This is seriously one of my favorite albums. And once again, Gift of Gab shows off his ridiculous rhyming skills. Amazing face to danger, hazy ways, my blazing arrow. The race that range from Asia way to Rio de Janeiro. Blazing Arrow did sell pretty well overall. It reached as high as number 49 on the Billboard 200. This was due in large part to the album's lead single called Make You Feel That Way, which had a decently popular music video and received a fair amount of radio play in certain regions. Seeing that video on MTV in 2002 is actually how I discovered Black Alicious to begin with. Insert cliche joke about how MTV used to actually air music videos once upon a time. Of course, the rhymes are great as usual, but I also really love the positive, chill vibes of the song. And that kind of described Black Alicious as a whole. For the most part, they made fun, positive, uplifting music. And if you know me, you know I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. So I wanted to share this music with you so you could really listen and get a sense of why I love it so much. But if you know anything about YouTube, then you know having copyrighted music in your videos almost guarantees that you will make little to no money from ads. So it would be really cool, particularly in this case, if you showed some love to Nebula. As one of the creators on Nebula, a portion of your subscription actually directly supports me. And Nebula sponsored this video so I could tell you about our great video platform that creators actually own. And if you really like this video, you can watch it or any of my other videos ad free on Nebula, which also supports me. In fact, Nebula is the only reason I've considered making a video that I likely won't make much ad revenue on. That's one of the very reasons we made Nebula, so we can be less beholden to YouTube to make a living creating the content that we actually want to make. And some of the best content that these creators make is exclusive to Nebula in the form of Nebula Originals. For example, Abigail from Philosophy Tube just dropped her new play, The Prince, exclusively on Nebula. It's a full length play. So it's not only good for us creators, but you also get to see content from your favorites that you simply won't find on YouTube. Also, Nebula is pretty cheap, but be sure to use my link in the description, which can get you Nebula for a little under $3 a month if you get the annual plan. So please check that out. It would mean a lot. Blackalicious followed up Blazing Arrow with The Craft, which had more live instrumentation compared to the sampled mixes from previous records. It starts off with a high speed lyric flex, basically what we'd come to expect from Gift of Gab by this point. Engine, engine, number nine, Mike Lynch, and when we're done with this, these songs are our pension. MCs are puppets, me, I'm Jim Henson, take a squat or get chopped by the henchmen. But as the album progresses, it gets more and more unique and experimental. Dwelling in the zone is so rare, really no man, be a man to try to go there, out of your head. I love this album too. It received glowing reviews, but it failed to reach the audience that Blazing Arrow and Nia did, possibly due to the lack of a strong marketable single. I don't know for sure, but I suspect that the poor showing of the craft kind of killed Gab and Excel's enthusiasm because Blackalicious went on an indefinite hiatus immediately after it. They didn't completely disappear. Gab released a couple of very decent solo projects and Excel did some work with the soul singer Lettucey. But diehard fans during this time, like myself, had to come to terms with the fact that Blackalicious might be done. In 2012, at the age of 39, Gift of Gab received some life-altering news. And in uh, January 2012, I thought I had the flu. I was, you know, I was throwing up, my energy was real low. I was like, this don't feel right. Ended up going into the hospital. They said, you've got kidney failure. I didn't actually know about this when it happened. I'm not sure if it was even public knowledge, but going back and learning about this situation, I was so impressed with Gab's positivity and determination in dealing with these circumstances. I'm sure he had dark moments, but ultimately this experience only encouraged him to continue doing the thing he believed he was put on this earth to do. It almost made me work harder. Now I have something more to say. When it rains, put on a jacket. Which brings us back to Daniel Radcliffe. Now, like most talk show segments, this challenge from Jimmy Fallon was obviously planned in advance. But for some reason, probably because Radcliffe is a fan because he clearly knows the whole song by heart, 
Alphabet Aerobics was chosen to be performed. Artificial amateurs aren't at all amazing. Analytically, I assault animate things. Broken barriers bound in by the bomb beat. Buildings are broken, basically I'm bombarding. Despite the fact that it was completely obscure outside of diehard fans. The song was never released as a single. It didn't have a video. It isn't even on a full length album. It was only on an EP. But because the song is so interesting and cool and because Harry Potter can rap apparently, this clip went mega viral. I'm not talking about a couple million views. Try over a hundred million views. Suddenly, Alphabet Aerobics was everywhere. Casually create catastrophes, casualties, canceling cats, got their canopies collapsing. That near a dime a dang Galen doing dope. Demonstrations, Don Dada on the download. Eating other editors with each and every energetic, epileptic episode, elevated etiquette. Furious, fabulous, fantastic. And as you might imagine, this brought a huge new wave of attention to the group that made Alphabet Aerobics. Gift got great global goods going glorious. Getting godly in this game with the glorious. Hit them high, hella hype, historical. Hey, Holocaust him, serum, holler at your homeboy. And remember, Black Alicious is on hiatus at this point. But Gift of Gab had recently found a lot of free time to work on some new music. So I realized I can get a lot of lyrics written in here. This is a perfect place because I'm just sitting here. I was like, all right, I'm gonna go hard. And then we started working on this record right then. So a lot of weird, unexpected circumstances came together to give Black Alicious the inspiration they needed to release their first album together in 10 years, an album called Imani Volume 1. Imani Volume 1 wasn't a major chart topper, but it was well received by those who listened to it. And besides, according to Black Alicious, they were just getting warmed up. It was Volume 1 because it was intended to be the first of a three-part series. In 2019, they said they had over 70 tracks recorded and and were working on putting it all together. Unfortunately, Black Alicious would never get to release these follow-ups. In 2021, despite a successful kidney transplant, Timothy Parker, better known as Gift of Gab, passed away at the age of 50. And I hate to end this video on a downer, but that's how it goes sometimes. I just wanted to talk about what I think was a very underappreciated rap group and maybe create some new fans to celebrate this unsung hip hop legend, Gift of Gab. And hey, who knows, maybe one day we'll get to hear some of those unreleased tracks. Thank you for watching.